Good morning and thank you for joining me today. While celebrated mainly by Roman Catholics, many Anglicans also celebrate this day of Corpus Christi, the Body of Christ. A day of thanksgiving for the institution of Holy Communion and for the presence of Christ within it. And so today, may we pause for a moment to remember, to give thanks and to live in the good of all that Jesus has done for us upon the cross, all that he has accomplished for us. And so as we come together this morning for morning prayer, we'll begin with the hymn, Broken for Me, Broken for You. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. 
God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all the nations. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 147. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars he gives to all of them their names. For great is the Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who honour him, in those whose hope is in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his words to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading taken is from Deuteronomy chapter 8, beginning at verse 2. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these forty years in the wilderness, in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The clothes on your back did not wear out, and your feet did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a parent disciplines a child, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Therefore keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land flowing with streams, with springs, and with underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given to you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances and his statutes which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, 
and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow from the flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Today's canticle is called A Song of the Covenant. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives you breath and whose spirit is upon those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people a light to the nations, to open the blind, the eyes of the blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon and from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptised into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did, for as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think that you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overcome you that is not common to everyone. For God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out, so that you may be able to endure it. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from the worship of idols. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not the sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. And so we say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. 
and you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come this day with gratitude for the gift of the Eucharist. We thank you, Lord, that when we partake of it, we are strengthened and renewed. This day, Lord, we pray for your church, that all who lead us and guide us in our faith will help us to live as the one body of Christ, growing ever to closer to Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our world leaders, especially for our government here in the United Kingdom. We pray, Lord, that they may always strive to satisfy the human hunger for peace and for justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are in need, that richer peoples and nations will share their bread and wealth with those who are poor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, your word tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so, Lord, we pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the promises of God, that they may be faithful to the covenant that they have received and obedient to the commands of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for our parishes here of Sanderstead and Riddlesdale, and for all who hunger for meaning and purpose in their lives, that our needs will be satisfied by turning to Jesus, who is the living bread. In a moment of quietness, we pause to remember those amongst us who need a touch of his grace at this time. Today, Lord, we pray for Deborah and Ashley Elsden. We pray for Eve Pierce. We pray for Jane Stevens. We pray, Lord, for Corin and for Michael. Pray for Mazarin. We pray for Ilsa. We pray for David and the choir. We pray, Lord, for our servers at St. Mary's and St. James. And we 
we pray, Lord, for all of our young people who are a part of Chrome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are sick or suffering in any way, that they will be comforted by the ever-present love of your self. And we pray especially this day for Kim Brown. God our Father, as we celebrate today's feast, hear our prayers and grant us a love of the Eucharist that will never grow stale, but will deepen and intensify all the days of our life. We make these and all of our prayers in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you that in your wonderful sacrament, you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruits of your redemption. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And so as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>